me start to give a brief introduction about Prof Huang's background. Uh, Prof Huang Yalin is the Deputy Director of International Affairs, Department of Visual Communication Design at the National Wingling University of Science and Technology. Her areas of specialization include creating and planning of visual communication design, cross-domain application designs, holographic stereo imaging and multi-dimensional image designs. She has been involved with numerous projects uh, such as curating exhibition, uh, such as the re reconstruction of history, historical sites for the Cultural Access Bureau of the Ministry of Culture in 2019 to 2020, and uh, the creation of the calm measuring instruments in Taijiang National Park in 2019. Through this web my, the webinar, Prof. Fang Yalin intends to share her unique per perspective of working with her grad students. So uh, before I hand in the time to Prof. Fang and her grad students, uh, I want to remind all the attendees that if you have any question, please address your question in Q&A. Please address your questions in Q&A. Okay. Uh, so now let us welcome Prof. Huang and her grad students to tell us their story. Prof. Huang? Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Dr. Sun, and good morning, everyone. So I'm going to share my screen. Where is it? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so we're going to start. So all my students is here. <laughs> um, yes, okay. Um, okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is our pleasure to share a talk to you and thank you for inviting us to join um, the, this activity. I will do this presentation with my students today in the title of one exhibition, one story. We are going to share two exhibitions we had done to you. Since uh, Dr. Sun already introduced me, so I'm going to quick introduce four of my excellent students. Um, Jing Wen, is, is Jing Wen here? Um, Hello. Okay, this is Jing Wen. She just got her bachelor degree and going to graduate study this fall semester. And this is Yu Zhen. Hi. Yu Zhen just got her master degree a few weeks ago. This is Guan Yin. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Guan Yin is in the first year of graduate study. And Jin Lun. Hi. Jin Lun is the only gentleman in the team. And he took his uh, graduate study in industrial design. Okay, back to the talk today. Uh, for me, exhibition is a media. In the exhibition, it shows cultural reformation, bring the content communication from curator to creators. A great exhibition also bring more imagination to the audience. Most of exhibition has their target audience. So that means each exhibition need to come out with a marketing plan. How to open the sense of audience in an exhibition is always a big issue for me. I'm going to share how to bring the sensory idea into exhibition. This is an exhibition I made for the Ministry of Culture in Taiwan. The exhibition itself must integrate the achievement of 30 cities government across Taiwan. A regeneration of historic sign is a project promoted by the Ministry of Culture for years. The main purpose of regeneration of historic sign is not only to repair the historic uh, architecture, but also to rethink the relationship between the historic sign and the people in contemporary to understand more about our hometown from past to present. Our team feel um, light is very difficult thing 
to present a beautiful concept for us. Uh, every past history has created us today and every moment of ours also create a future of tomorrow. However, how to transfer such an abstract concept into concrete exhibition is the first problem we had in, con in the plan of exhibition. The second problem we have is there are 30, 30 historical signs, each with different stories. They are including archaeology signs in ancient time, multiculturalism, which like indigenous, southern Fujian, Hakka, Chinese, and other cultures. City historical signs, each with a different style and contents. How to put them in the same exhibition is what uh, it was very hard for us. In the past, this type of exhibition may use a single layout to press the content all together, but this is not the way we want to do. Therefore, uh, we designed to carry out such cultural content exhibition with the concept of scenery travel. In this trip, we guide the audience to learn the concept of 30 historical signs through things, smell, hearing, taste, touch, and mind. Enter the exhibition hall. We start to open the audience's sensory um, trip through three parts. First of all, there are three newspaper birds. The three newspaper birds carry 30 historical sign image in the past and present. It helps the audience to understand quickly we are going to show them the journey between the history and now. In the process of traveling, they are always be stationed to tell all passengers the relationship between the locations. In our exhibition journey, we use the signboard design and put some uh, portrait text to present the time relationship between each, each uh, historical sign and, uh, and present. Every historical place actually had an important relationship with, with uh, geographic location. Therefore, through the interactive modes of stamping, we let the audience step on different location in Taiwan and shows what historical signs are in the location. After open the sense of audience through the sense, um, through the sense, they allow public to participate in, in the travel of 30 locations in the relationship of re regeneration of historical sign. We combine different technology of interactive media to the journey, including uh, image mapping, accurate reality, interactive sense device, and so on. We hope the audience can understand the concept of regeneration of historical science through the sensory travel in the exhibition. More importantly, we hope that when they leave this exhibition, they can truly enter to different historical science. Now, um, we are going to quick show you the journey of this exhibition by video. 重現歷史,再造歷史,歷史的故事,創造新的歷史,屬於你我的共同故事,將在現場展開,無限延續。This is fishing holding in the cultural park in Taichung. So now we are going to enter the exhibition. Now you will see the three parts to open the audience uh, sensory journey from the image, image, uh, image imagination, time guiding, and location guiding.
Through vision, we can see the uh, historical change of the two major ports in the north and south. And ruin brought by the war and also the lifestyle of different cultures. In the exhibition, we built up two doors and two windows. So when audience open the door, they can see one kind, of, one type of culture. Through the smell, um, re re experience many historical memory. So hearing, we try to awake the memory of history. And text here. Uh, here is the historical content of Taiwan's rice and sugarcane industrial. This part is a um, pastel discuss the process of archaeology in Taiwan. The last part is touch of heart. Uh, this part is emphasized the cultural assets under religion. And at the is it the important concept of this exhibition is present. The advancement of history is not one person taking a hundred step forward, but a hundred person taking one step forward together. This is about the exhibition we just finished uh, this April. Okay. Uh, so a good exhibition has fascinating quality and emotional marketing power. So the city government, uh, the Tainan city government took the lead in promoting the cooperation between local museum and university since 2017. Through competition, four to five student team are selected each year to uh, participate in exhibition of Tainan local museums. So uh, Tainan city government organized every 18th of May is the opening of joint exhibition between university and local museum, which is the same day as the War Museum Day. Since uh, 2018, I have six teams that have been given the opportunity to participate in the exhibition. During the whole process, students from research, founding the themes, working on design, and finally engage in interactive activity with public. The whole process can concentrate very complete learning experience in curation field. This year, two groups of students of mine were selected for the China Museum Festival competition. Today, the student from a Tupu warrior will come to share their exhibition to you. A Tupu is um, the 
indigenous Zhou's language means four. So, um, so they are going to share the story. Okay, I'm going to pass to Jingwen. Okay, before we start, let's watch your video first. <laughs> The film clip we just watched come from Cyber Kabala, a famous movie about the indigenous people of Taiwan. Next. Entering the topic, what I want to share with you today is a Tupu warrior road to culture exploration and cooperation. Next. The indigenous people in Taiwan are divided into 16 tribes. They live in different areas of Taiwan. Next. Every tribe has its unique music, unique custom, and unique culture, which of them also has different needs. Next. For example, in Shao's culture, all is simple of pregnancy. Black simple originated from the mix. In the mix, a pregnant girl goes to death on the mountain. Then her body turns into an owl. Next. In Taiya's culture, they think that the moon was made from the sun. According to the mix, the, in ancient times, there were once two suns in the sky. Then a Taiya warrior showed a sun with a bow and a rod, turning it into the moon. Next. In those culture, there is, there is a flood region. According to the region, a giant eel led a river and caused the flood. The Zhou tribe was forced to move to the top of the mountain until the giant squirt scared away the giant eel and the flood received. Next. Among three names, which story impressed you the most? Well, we adopt the last story. A Tupu warrior named in warrior is flood. As, as our thing to hold an exhibition. And now my teammates. Guan Yin will show more about this journey. Okay, so now you've, you've already heard from Jing Wens about the brief introduction about Taiwan indigenous people, right? Now we're going to share more about how we try to collect for all the culture and for all the data they are appropriate to present in our exhibition please. So this part will contain two parts. First, we will start from how we collect for the legendary story from Taiwan indigenous people. Next, please. Now, if you want to present a story, of course, you've got to choose a story, right? So we've actually find different versions of stories through the internet. And that's the problem we're facing at that time. So we managed to arrange the data source either from the internet or from the published data. And we also arrange the data source to categorize them if they're from the same author. Also, we also email the author in order to get the systematic data from one source. Next, please. So after we got the source of the story, after we choose for the version of the story, we have to apply for the copyrights of Taiwan indigenous people. Well, for your reference in Taiwan, if you want to include your, um, the culture of Taiwan indigenous people, it's very important and essential that you have to ap apply for the copyrights. Now, we also visited Tefuye Community Development Association 
we learn from the oral, oral stories of those elders about their stories. And their stories are pretty different from the versions we found through the internet. Next, please. So this is an example for you to understand the process, how we collected for the version of the story. Now we're going to choose part of the flop legend as an example. And it's talking about a crab is asking something in return to fight the giant eel. Okay, so basically we base on the original story. It's about the crab asking for the pubic hair, which is the hair around women's sexual organs. And based on the story, we added one new plot and characters, which is the God of Hunt. And the God of Hunt is giving a challenge for those people to be environmental friendly. So based on the story, we add some plots here for our first version of the story. Now, after this, we found out that there's actually another version of the story, which is the pubic hair is replaced in black hairs. So this difference makes us really curious about which, sto which story is appropriate to present. Okay, next, please. Now, since we're really curious about the differences between, so we visited Tofu Ye, Community Development Association for confirming the details. And we also learned from the Zhou's elders that we have to correct the names from the God of Hunts into the God of Mountains. So after we finally choose the selected version of our story, we then adjust the tone of telling the story so that we can fit in our exhibition. Now that part, Yujun will then share more later. Okay, next please. So the content will change from the original one, a crab is calm and asking for a present, which is a pubic hair. Then it go down to the river and pinch the belly of the eel, turning into the crab is challenging all people to respect the land and being environmental friendly. Then the crab promised to fight the eel. Okay, so you can see the difference here. Next, please. Next, please. Okay. So after we're talking about the process, how we collect for the stories, we then now move forward to another part, which is the music. Since we're collaborating with Shu Shi Music Library, so in their music library, it's pretty important to present the music, this important element. So that's how we put music into our elements of our exhibition. So let's start with how we present a folk song. Next, please. Okay. Uh, there's a slide being skipped. Can we go back? Um, Professor Huang. Okay, so um, because since our music is using the vinyl LP, and um, you can imagine this form of recording music, it's being published in old days. So this is the first difficulty we're facing here because we couldn't easily find the music disc. And so even we found the music disc, we couldn't have a player to play for the music. So at the first time, we let off the music file itself here. Next, please. So what we managed to do here is we try to find the music and each single song from different sources through the internet or published data either from the Collaborative Museum, Shi Shi Music Library itself, or from the owner of the copyright of some part of the album, Traditional Art Center. And we also contacted Shi Shi's family members to get the song. And as a backup plan, we even find the reproduction and the cover version in order that we don't have music to use at all. Next, please. So as a result, we are very lucky that we finally got the sum of the selected song from the Collaborative Museum, which is Shi Shi Library. And that's which part that we're presenting. Next, please. After we collected for the source of the music, we then facing 
the second question here, since we've already mentioned that the music is published in old days in 1968. So you can imagine in that old days, you just don't get the social media platform so easily such as Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, etc., to promote your music or to introduce your creation. So that's the problem here that we couldn't find the systematic introduction of each song. Next, please. So we tried to find the secondhand introduction of each song from the internet or the data, either from the reproduction for every single song we've mentioned before, or from the books that are related to Taiwan indigenous music since Xu Shi is the master and dedicate a lot to Taiwan indigenous music. Next, please. And as a result, but thankfully, we got a really lucky result that we found a book that are introducing about Xu Shi and it's talking about the process and all the creation of the music collection from Xu Shi. So that's how we present our music introduction at last. Next, please. So now we're going to also have an example for you to understand the process of how we collect for the music. Let's see the video first. Okay, so you can see some women are singing and chanting. Okay, so from the video, we can see two, there are two parts. In the first part, some women are chanting. In the second part, the women are pounding their stone mortars with their wooden pestle, which is the long stick they're holding on their hands. And actually, this pestle has been used as tools in Taiwan indigenous culture in order to pounding for the millet, which is a very representative Taiwanese cuisine. But also, this pestle is being used as the music instruments, just like what you saw from the video, in order to make wonderful sound and music. And this kind of scene is usually seen in traditional festival in Taiwan indigenous culture. Well, especially in Shao's culture, one of the Taiwanese tribe, it is a symbol of harvesting and also as a calling for all hunters to come back in order to celebrate for their new year. Next, please. So now we've already found one version of the music from the internet. Let's hear the music first. Okay, so now I, you might hear from the pastel song from this version of the music. Well, actually, this song is called the pastel song. And it's the most famous indigenous song from the collection of Xu Shi. And actually, the title, the pastel song, is made from the Shao's music we've just introduced before, right? And actually, the song lyrics is adapted from Amis, which is another Taiwanese indigenous tribe in Taiwan. It's adapted from their moon song. And this song will be singing during while they're pounding for the millets. Next, please. So, um, okay, thank you. So this will be the final version. Now we're hearing the music first. Thank <laughs> you. 
So you can hear from the music that it is actually the combination of women singing and the pesto sound. And that's the final version we find through the book that are introducing about Shi Shi, Taiwanese indigenous music. And you can also, as a comparison, to see the lyrics on the right side of the slide. It's talking about their chanting and the lyrics for this song. Okay. So this is just a glimpse for the, of the example from the culture and the story into our exhibition. Now, Yu Zhen and I will together share more about the examples in our exhibition and all the guidelines that we lead through in order to reform the culture stories into our exhibition display. Okay, next please. Okay, hi everyone. Um, we form the design of cultural exhibition today um, today we will going to explain how we use cultural reference, such as myths, legend, or the traditional literature, to um, to explain how we use this literature to make a new cultural exhibition. And because there are lots of stories in this part, so Guan Yin will brief the Joe's cultural story for you, and I will illustrate how we use the these stories to reform a new element in our exhibition. Okay, next, please. So the first part is the official reformation. Okay, next. Okay, and this is our poster. Today I will talk about four major points of the official reformation. Okay, next. Okay, so the first part is texturing and style. Let's take a look at the least three pictures. These three pictures are example of wood engraving. Because we want our texture and style to convey rough, harsh, and a sense of rawness, so we mimic the texture of the wood engraving, including its sharp edges and the white line inside it. And now let's take a look at the bird. The bird has a sharp edges and have lots of white lines inside it. But not only the bird have these features, but so does the all, uh, so do all the characters and all the decoration in our exhibition have the same features. Um, and so does the river. You can see there are lots of lines inside the river. Okay, next please. And now let's focus on color. There are four colors in our exhibition, red, blue, black, and white. And uh, let's take a look at these four pictures. These four pictures describe life in Zhou. So it is pretty obvious that um, Zhou people really like to use these four colors. Red, blue, black, and white are their traditional colors. And that's why we pick these four colors to design our visual identity in our exhibition. And uh, the next part is the totem. We can see totem everywhere in the picture. Um, they really enjoy using totem to decorate their things. So that's why we decided to use totem to decorate our, our characters. Okay, next please. And since we have lots of stories and lots of characters in our exhibition, so today we will take Nifunu as example to explain how we use reference and stories of the figures to um, create and design them. And Guan Yin will brief the story for us. Okay, thank you, Yujin. So now we're going to start the example from the Nifnu story. And all you need to know about Nifnu is, according to those legendary story, Nifnu is their god of creation. And Nifnu is actually a giant goddess that whose feet are too huge that she can walk across big mountains. And Nifnu is also a very clever and skillful woman that she can accomplish many different difficult tasks. And according to the legend, she is also kindly as their mother. And also the meaning of Nifnu, the name, has the meaning of boobs. So that's the description from Nifnu. And then you'll get to have another comparison. So I saw her on the right side of the slide as a comparison. 
So I saw how, according to those legendary story, is the god of ruin. So if Nifmil create the things, then Zoysar ruin all the things. Well, it's an interesting legend, right? So that's why we intended to include both of these two figures in the beginning in our exhibition. But then, after we visit the Tofuye Community Development Association, the Dou elders express their denial of the soy soha because they think it's not that auspicious. Well, in Chinese, it's meaning it's not that lucky to include soy soha, the god of ruin, in our exhibition. So that's why at last we decided to remove Soi Soha, the god of ruin, from our exhibition. Okay, so that's the story about Nifnu. And now back to Yu Zhen, she will share how we reform this story into the character design. Okay, thank you, Guang. Um, so we emphasize Nifnu's feminine features to present the image of a kind goddess, such as long hair, boobs, or friendly eyes. And some of you might notice that all our figures are in strange structures. They look like human, but also have features of non-human. We indeed use extra line to uh, make our characters more legendary. And plus, legend has less exact description about our figures. So um, we decided to leave the imaginative spaces for our audiences. Okay, next please. So the final part of the visual reformation is local type. We decide the mythological figures first, and then we decide the local type. So you can see there are lots of similar features between them. They are both black and just like the characters, the black figures floating on the river. The stroke of the local types are very thick, just like the figures. And they both have totem on them. Okay, next please. So in this part, we've done four things visually. One is texture and style, and then is color scheme and totem, and then is mythological figures. The final part is logo type. Okay, next, please. Okay. After finishing the visual reformation, let's move on to the story. There are five stories in our exhibition, and there is one story in each section. So how do we guide our audiences through the stories? How do we? connected five different stories. Next, please. We take Xu Shi as a guide of our exhibition. And why we take Xu Shi as our guide? There are two reasons. First is Xu Shi has studied culture of indigenous people in Taiwan before. Second is we held our exhibition in Xu Shi Musical Library. And you can see on the upper right side, there is a little black hat. That is the illustration of Xu Shi. Okay, next please. And how Xu Shi guide the audience. In the beginning of the exhibition, Xu Shi will invite the audiences and, hey, let's become a triple warrior together. And a triple warrior means the warrior in Zhou. So to become a warrior, audience need to learn more stories and legend or knowledge about Zhou. So Xu Shi will communicate with other figures. Let's take a look at the upper right side. There is a picture. Before audience enter each section, they will see a board like this. And in this board, Xu Shi will ask some questions, which is relevant with the section. The other characters will answer. Um, most of them will um, answer, they will introduce why the stories happen or they will introduce themselves. Okay, next please. So the next part is interactive reformation. We have lots of interactive device in our exhibition because our target audience are kids. So we really want to make our exhibition fun and playful. In this part, I will explain how we reform the knowledge and legend to uh, make an interactive device. Okay, next. And our first example is Gift from Nifunu, which is our second section. And uh, Guan Yin will brief the story of Nifunu for us. Uh, next, please. 
Okay, so now we're back to our story time again. And now we're going to start the example actually from the story of Destiny God. Well, what you need to know about Destiny God is it is a God that will pour water on baby's head as soon as the baby was born. And actually the amount of water will determine the professions of the babies. In other words, the God of Destiny will pour water to determine what you will do after you grow up. Okay, so that's an interesting story we found through the internet. But then after we visited Tefui Association, the Zhou elders expressed their denial to this culture and to these figures and to the stories. But instead, they offer a very interesting traditions and cultures in their tribes, which is whenever they have difficulties during the children growth, they will all come to wizards for the guide, guidance and for the help. So that's, if you want to present a legendary story from Zhou, we've actually selected Nifnu here. So if you remember Nifnu, Nifnu is the god that is very pretty, smart and clever, so she can accomplish many things. So here we use Nifnu as a sim symbol to symbolize the help in order to get the children to grow more smoothly. Now, Yuzhen will then share how we reform the story into the exhibition display. Next, please. Okay, uh, thank you, Guan Ying. So you can see on the right side of the slide, we use raindrop to represent the symbol of help from Nifunu, and we use grass to represent kids, which receive help from Nifunu slash raindrop. So that is our sec. Um, that is our concept in second session. Okay, next please. And this is a close-up video. In the video, you can see we write some information on the raindrop. So if audience want to read the information, they can just three for the raindrop. Okay, next please. And the other example is the token. It is our fourth section and Guan will help. Guan will say the story for us. Next, please. Okay, thank you, Yuzhen. So let's come back to our story time again. And this will be the first story for today, the story of the token. The story is mainly about the immigration history of Do people. And the story start from the flood. Well, for a reference, if anyone's curious about the relation between Zhou people and Tainan, since we're having the Tainan Museum Festival, right? Well, you may get the answer after the story. Now, the story start from the flood, and after the flood, Zhou people immigrated from the peak of the Jade Mountain down back to the ground. And one, of, one group of the people went down to Tainan, and another group went all the way, according to the legend, up to Japan. Well, before departure, the two group of the people split one arrow into two pieces, and each of the group took one pieces as a promise. So if the future they would be united again, they could recognize each other. Okay, so after the story, you may find there are really a deep relation between Tainan and Shish and Zhou people. Now also for a reference, Tainan has held Tainan Zhou Day every year to commemorate the legendary story. Okay, now back to Yuzhen and she will share how we reform this story into the exhibition display. Next, please. Okay, so now we know that at the end of the story, people take broken arrow and say goodbye. Some of them went north, some of them went south. Uh, Richard, sorry for interrupting. You, you guys you still have five minutes left. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, so we designed the arrow into two pieces, just like the one in the story. Kids can move the broken arrow, go either north or south. And I'm not sure if you guys noticed that this device is similar to Birthright game. We were inspired by the Birthright game. In the game, there is a stick and we need to move the stick along the track without touching its edges. Okay, next please. 
And this, um, the next part is literature reformation. We take, uh, next please. Okay, we take like a second sec, uh, third section at the Blue Warrior as example, and Guan Yin will bring the story for us. Okay, so now this will be the last, last and final story for today, but it's also the most symbolic one. So let's talk everyone. Once upon a time, there is a little eel being put in a little container. And as days passed, the little eel grows bigger and bigger. And finally, it gets stuck in the river. Next, please. At the same time, the human doll people are overly hunting for all the animals and creatures. And this kind of behavior makes God really angry since God thinks they didn't live in harmony with all the creatures in land. So the angry God decided to give some punishment to the human, which is the heavy rain. So if you remember the stuck eel in the river, well, the combination of that and the heavy rain will eventually lead to the human's disaster, which is the flood. And because of the flood, the Dou people had to escape the way from the ground to the mountain. And during their stay on the peak of Jane Mountain, they got food and help from underground people. Okay, so that's the story. And now we, for reference, we added a figure and a plot here, which is the underground people part in order to convey the important food culture, the millet culture in Dou people. Next, please. Okay, so back to the story. After they got help from the underground people, they then met sacred bird, Black Bobos. And Black Bobos advised that they should come to giant crabs for help. So the giant crabs give them a challenge that if you can respect the land and being environmental friendly, I will help you to find the giant eel. So after the Zhou people learn how to respect the land, um, the giant crab helped them to pinch the belly of the giant eel, made them feeling painful and then escaped away. So that's where and when the flood receded and the land come to lively again. Okay, so we also added another plot of those value of protecting environment here in order to convey their important issue. Okay, now Eugene will then share how we change this long and beautiful story into the exhibition. Next, please. Okay, thank you, Guan Yin. So we have two goals in our exhibition. First is our target audience are kids and they are below 12 years old. Second is we want our exhibition with educational purpose. So to reach the goals, we have some strategies. Uh, we look up a bunch of books for children and we mimic the way they communicate with them. Uh, we study how others communicate with kids, how they illustrate the uh, stories how we introduce the characters so that's how we make our own children's literature but not only we use the simple word but also we you um we draw a lot of illustration next please and this is a close-up illustration video in the video you can see it is a it is a really really long very long illustration in this illustration, it described the Atupu story, the story that Guan Yin just told us. Okay, next, please. With that picture, you can see there are some books on this really long illustration. In these books, we introduce the figures, the characters, um, sorry, the characters, um, because like their background story or the tools they like to use. So kids can open a book and go and get more info to them. Okay, next please. So today we talk about three major points about reformation. First is visual and then is interactive. The final part is literature. And now Julian will conclude the sharing for us. Next please. I will make the conclusion of the expression about the process. We start expression from thinking how to turn the context of math into story, then how to turn the story into a visual image, and make all the stories can interact with the viewer. First, we research math and story of the context. Second, con convert their fairy tale into image. 
finally plan the story of the overall net expansion. Next, please. About the expansion plan, we will treat and treat the Mexico character with the story to combine this character. All the story divide into five parts in this expression. And each part of expression, we try to combine the interaction idea into the display. We design each expression session as simple as Windows display and try to interesting way to share the Adobe Warrior story to the audience. Now the video going to show you the whole expression. Let's take a look. Okay, this is the end of our talk. Hope you like two, this two exhibition we just shared to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Prof Fang and the students. Uh, uh, I think uh, your team, Prof Fang and the team, has shared a very uh, fascinating process to prepare their exhibition. Uh, and we have listened to many precious music clips and also in interesting story like the myth of soul, although we didn't attend the exhibition at all. So uh, maybe just let me ask the question. Uh, I just wonder that because the whole exhibition yeah. seems like it's very huge and it seems a very complicated process for the preparation. So I just wonder, Prof and the team, what is the most challenging part you have faced when you prepare for, for this exhibition? Well, um, for the beginning, uh, because we have, uh, we have to start everything from zero. So um, the most um, the most problem we always have is uh, we always need to face huge data, huge information. So how to get the line out and make the story to the audience is always the biggest problem for us. And for the students, uh, they have to join the competition with other university students. So they need to um, pick up the story and also find out a local museum, which and who want to cooperate with them. So uh, for example, for this group of students, they had to find out at least two or three uh, local museums. And finally, they got a music library to agree to uh, cooperate with the students. So they spent almost two or three months to finish all the, all the um, the cooperation part. Yeah. Is anyone want to explain? Raise the hand. Okay, so um, I'll get to the point. Actually, um, what Professor just mentioned, yes, we indeed spent two or three months in order to find one expect special museum that would like to cooperate with us because some of them don't have the time since they already have a plan for another exhibition maybe we got too late to contact with them and some of them they think our theme is not appropriate for them for their future direction of the museum so that's why in the beginning we got rejected by some of the museums but then Thankfully, we find the museum, which is Xu Shi Music Library, that were um, willing to cooperate with, cooperate with us about this very special thing about to present Taiwan indigenous people. Yes, thank you for your question. Okay, 
Uh, so anybody else want to share? And the student just mentioned the last video we play, uh, Miss La La Sun. So can we share again? Oh sure. So if anyone can play the video, Jingwen, are you going to do that? I have no idea how come the Sorry, sun. Prof one. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm Eugene here, one of the panelists here. I have a question I see. Uh, uh, Dr. Sun, don't mind if I read the question, yeah? Uh, sure. um, so this is coming from, I think, one of our colleagues. And they are asking if, um, if uh, this, is there a digital link to this exhibition that we can view it from Malaysia remotely? Um, thanks for sharing the thought process. So is there a virtual, <laughs> everything virtual nowadays. I think everyone expects that there might be something virtual, but might there be one that we can visit? So far not. <laughs> so probably, yeah, we, we were thinking uh, for the coming exhibition since the COVID-19, like these two years. So we, we may think about uh, some virtual exhibition in the future. Yeah, this is a very good question, and we're going to prepare that. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, Chingwen, are you ready for play the, the video? Uh, profile, uh, yes. just uh, interrupt a bit because I just have a question from the okay. Q&A. So, uh, there is uh, Mr. Victor Chen. He, he said that thanks for the very insightful and inspiring sharing. So, he just wondered, is it a one-off or would there be more tools of the exhibition? And after the exhibition, how would the conversation continue regarding the culture of the indigenous? You mean the, uh, the exhibition in the students group? Uh, I think uh, he means that is it going to have other exhibitions to uh, maybe that uh, go to other countries or other part of, of Taiwan or something else? Well, we would love to if we got budget to do that. <laughs> I think all the students would love to travel to other country to show to give the exhibition to to share. Yeah. So how <laughs> <All of> us? <laughs> so how would you uh, plan to continue the conversation regarding this culture of the indigenous? Well, uh, we interested in different kind of culture story very much. So um, I believe um, all the students and I, we were also looking forward uh, for new chance for doing the exhibition. Yeah, but it's very hard to, hard to say what kind of exhibition we're going to come out. Yeah. Okay, we are all looking forward to it. So uh, I think it's almost time. So uh, do you still have the video to share to yes, us? Yes. Yeah, one more video. So Jingwen, pass to you. This is the end. Okay, so uh, very nice sharing. And I, I still see some uh, question in the chat box, but the time is almost up. So uh, I think maybe you can, you guys can uh, discuss uh, in the chat box or maybe profile, you, you might like to leave the message over there. So uh, I need to pass the next section to the next facilitator. Uh, Eugene Fu, and thanks for participating in our events today, Prof Wang and the students. Thanks a lot, and see you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>